What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I'm trying to hack the outdoors today. So, anyway, I'm going to have to snow blow combined with the uh, frigid temperatures and the snow. But it is really, even on nice days or decent days of snow blowing, you still get a little fine snow mist around. And on top of that, I like to listen to my music or my podcast. So that's why I picked up this. And just came. It's the ILM. BM2S, basically motorcycle snowmobiling helmet with Bluetooth built in. So the nice thing is hopefully I can bundle up, have my whole face covered up instead of getting hit with uh, flying snow, listen to my jams uh, and uh, kind of do the whole thing in peace and actually feel like a little bit of an astronaut on the moon. So let's take a close look at this. I got it because it was one of the, the least expensive helmets with uh, the Bluetooth capability already built in. A lot of them are Bluetooth capable. So there is must be this kind of riding and intercom Bluetooth type of interface that you can buy or the hardware and then install it for helmets that are pre-made with it. But I don't really care about that. I just really wanted to interface with my uh, phone so that I can either take a call or listen, like I said, to music or podcasts. Now, this ILM helmet comes in this nice little stuff sack here, this carrying bag, so you don't have to worry about it getting scuffed up, although it's gonna, especially if you're gonna use it outdoors in the snow, I feel like you could get um, chipped up by snow and ice and whatnot. And here is the helmet itself. So that's pretty cool looking. I got it in white. It did come in a variety of colors, I think, flat black, shiny black, and then also gray. I thought the gray looked cool, but I thought, man, this would kind of blend in with the snow and it was kind of stormtrooper-ish looking. So I kind of dug that. Now, if I put this down here, there's a little box and it's the accessory box. And like, it looks like we get a little battery pack here. I'm assuming this is the battery. Kind of looks like a camcorder battery, but definitely is a little different. And then we have micro USB cable and a two prong outlet. And then underneath here, that seems like it's everything. So I guess we've got to put the battery in first. So you can see here, nice glossy white finish, that box. And I got this one in the XL because I have this giant pumpkin sized head. It's got plastic over the front here, which I'm gonna peel off. Just a cling wrap, so that's, that's easy to come off. I think one of the things and that is really nice about them is that they use the Venturi effect to kind of draw out the air inside the helmet. Now that's really good when you're moving because that fast moving air can create these low pressure areas that kind of draw the air out. I think you have a couple of vents right here. I don't know if these are switches. Yep, looks like these are switches right on the top so you can open or close these and that'll kind of let air that's being forced into the helmet through. But then on the back, you might be able to see these slits and I think this is what's causing the Venturi effect. So as air rushes past, these low pressure areas uh, vent out this air. And that's really good so that you don't get, you know, um, steam or fog buildup on the mask. My purpose for this is just to be outside snow blowing. And so I'm not gonna have really rushing air. And so I hope that we don't have that fog buildup right here on the, the plastic. And some snowmobile helmets and whatnot have what they call a breath mask, which is kind of, if you take your hand like this and just cover up uh, the area above your nose and mouth, they're kind of open on the bottom. So as you're breathing out, they're kind of, you're venting out all that air out of there. And it looked like this lower portion here might do a little bit of that, although it didn't have a, a, a distinctive breath mask feature. If we look here on this side, I have another switch right here. We're gonna move this switch over here, and it's not over here. It's moving the sunshade down. I'll see if you can see that. And now that'll release. You can see that sunshade even really more clearly. It's pretty cool. It must be spring loaded because it pops up and down really quickly. Now I again, I won't need that. And it does have plastic on it here, just like that to keep it nice and frosh. But I don't know, you know, if you're snow blowing and it's bright out, honestly, snow reflects a lot of light. You can feel kind of that retina burn. Um, and you can see here that this mask, uh, actually all those little cuts in that side that is detailed are a little detent. So you can kind of put this mask up and it'll hold a lot of different positions which is really nice because, especially if I'm worried about fogging and I just want a little venting, I could potentially just open it up here, allow some air in or my breath out, those types of things. Cool. All right. Uh, we also have some vents here on the back and even right here on the sides, as far as I can tell. And it says uh, DOT certified. All right, cool. Now on the bottom here, we have some really thick pleather-like padding. You can see maybe right there that it's all perforated on the bottom here. 
Okay, so to lift this whole thing up, this whole front portion here, you can see right down here, right on the chin, right on the, the front part, right in front of your mouth, there's a big red button there. And you just press that and that seems to release it. And now I can lift this whole thing up. So you get kind of your talking full access to the head here. I also have a nice thick chin strap here with these uh, pads on it and then a, a strap to release that, which I've never seen before. It looks like you pull this and then this kind of comes out and it's a little bit like a ski boot buckle. So you have some nice fine adjustment, but it's actually nice because that'll go in there really quick and then be able to be released really quick as opposed to strapping it through a couple of things. Now, um, this is where the battery goes and I believe I pull this out, that opens up this flap and now I have a little door here and what I can show you is that uh, there's a little plastic rubber cap. That's where the micro USB port will go into once you have this battery in there. And it's gonna go in this way. I'm just gonna go ahead and push it in. And then I'm gonna put this little door back on it. Snaps in there. We'll definitely get that charged up. But on this side, on the left side, what we have is a little control panel for the Bluetooth control. So it looks like I've got a little wheel here for volume control, kind of rocket forward for volume down or rocket back. So I can just kind of hit any of these. So it's nice and big. And then I'm assuming when you push it in, that's uh, like a little button there, answer, play, pause, hang up, that kind of thing. So let me just see if I can put this sucker on my head now. I'm hoping this is big enough. All right, well, for safety's sake, I think you want these things a little tighter uh, or relatively tight. And uh, this one is uh, right on, you know, it's holding and really snug on my face. I wouldn't call it overly big. And if you have a big pumpkin sized face like me, uh, kind of uh, an Asian dude like me, you might want to go to the XXL, but I think this is pretty nice and pretty comfortable. That's for sure. This is a pretty sweet helmet. Check out the link in the description below if you want to order one. Peter Von Panda, out!